mountain region of Nimba, near the border of French Guinea in the north. We pass jungle villages at the foot of the mountain. and climb towards the long, narrow ridge, which rises steeply, nearly 3,000 feet above the surrounding jungle. The ridge is like a sharp, rough back, and along it runs a new road, climbing boldly and steeply. Right at the top are the camps of Lamco, the Liberian American Swedish Minerals Company, which is investigating the deposits. The geologist camp. And beyond it, the workers' quarters. Putu camp and Lasana camp. And in the distance, the core drillers' camp. Here is the core drillers camp perched like an eagle's nest. And here is the geologist camp. Above it and immediately below Nimba's summit on the Liberian side of the frontier is a guest house with an extensive view over the savannas on the French side. On this steep, narrow ridge, drill holes have been placed obliquely from the side into the ore body. It is the Swedish Diamond Rock Drilling Company which does the work with Swedish foremen and Liberian workers. The Lamco geologist, Sandy Clark, a Scot, here demonstrates how the main ore body lies bare along the ridge. The red is high-grade iron ore. The blue is itabarite, which contains only 45 to 55 percent of iron. The drill hole tells that the main ore body is up to 1,000 feet thick. In a cut in the main ore body, the geologist Ulla Lundquist takes a few samples of ore. Here it is very soft and finely grained and contains about 69% of iron. A breakneck climb in a jeep or a station wagon with a four-wheel drive along a road built in daring sweeps on the brink of dizzy precipices and sometimes wider than the ridge itself brings you from one camp to another. A road also pitches down a narrow valley that cuts into the mountainside. On a stretch of 800 yards, the drop is 600 feet. Down there, a tunnel is being blasted through the main ore body in order to examine its chemical and physical properties, as well as the mining conditions. Samples of the ore body are also taken on the surface of one of the precipices. But it is not only the main ridge of Nimba that consists of high-grade iron ore beneath a thin layer of vegetation. On the western parallel ridge, Mount Gabam, are also outcrops of very high-grade iron ore. At the foot of the Nimba Massif, 
are two large grass fields. The one on the right is now an airfield. The left one is the headquarters of the operations at Nimba. The airstrip is hewn out of the bush. And nearby is the old headquarters. All that remains of it is a blockhouse, which is to form part of a new labor camp that is being built on the cleared area. The new headquarters lies somewhat higher, on a grass field right against the foot of the mountain. Here is the office. Some of the living quarters, each intended for one person, a bachelor. Lanco has built a large wide road of its own up to Nimba. The waterworks and all modern conveniences right in the bush. One day a tailor came walking along. He was quite the gentleman with a boy to carry his sewing machine. Lanco also has its own hospital up here. Nurse Inga Lagerstrom takes charge of a small patient. The camps at the top of Nimba have their own medical staff. Josta Blaking is bandaging a worker at the core drillers camp. Beside the staff restaurant at headquarters, a guest house is being built. And this row of new bungalows will be the first family dwellings. You build a massive mahogany. It grows right on the doorstep. this headquarters is only temporary. When the mining gets started, the base camp will be moved to a new site altogether, partly because the present one stands on a large deposit of iron ore, only 25 feet deep it is true, but worth a tidy packet. Nothing wrong with this ore, in the view of the mining engineer, Herbert Boya. Here is the camp superintendent, Arthur Adelstein, exercising his monkey, Peter. Monkeys are popular domestic animals at Nimba. Dodo, the chimpanzee, is given her daily bath by her master, Carl Henry Kuhlberg. 